Now let's get on to the story that's making me Mr. Grumpy, and I don't think just me, I think many other people as well. Comair has bought back shares from two of its non-executive directors, Atul Gupta and Ronan Tuli. The stock was worth 86 million rand. Um, Eric Fenter, Chief Executive of Comair, is with us in the studio. Eric, let's just go back a little bit. How long have these guys been on your board? Uh, they've been on since about uh, 2008. And how did they acquire these shares in the first place? Originally they bought them on the market, uh, both, the lots were bought on the market. Um, Ronnie and Tuli is involved in our B empowerment deal. These, aren't, these shares are not linked to the empowerment deal, these they bought in addition to the deal that we did. So uh, they purchased these on the market at the time and they've held them for some time now. now I can understand Ron, I, he's an uh, ex-merchant uh, banker, investment banker, the kind of person you'd want on your board. Why Gupta? Well, he purchased the shares at the time. Our, our chairman at the time um, invited him to join the board, and uh, I wasn't directly involved in that decision at the time, but uh, that was the decision of our chairman in 2008. So you get these two guys on the board. You quoted in BD Live this morning as saying you had no idea why they sold the shares, but you, the company, bought the shares from them. Yes. Well, we didn't, we, we've been talking for some time about trying to do a repurchase, but the volumes traded have been extremely small uh, over a long period of time now. And um, we suddenly got a call from, from a broker saying, well, there are 23 million shares on the market. So we scrabbled to try and get, we don't even have a broker in place for Comair because we don't normally do a lot of, of, of share action on, in Comair. So we scrabbled to get a broker in place to try and take up these shares uh, in accordance with the mandate we have for the 10% buyback. And uh, we were a bit nervous that someone else would snap up the shares in the meanwhile because uh, we had to do a lot of paperwork to, to even get a mandate in place for a broker to do the purchase. But fortunately we did manage to collect the shares. We did get a few more in the process as well. So we ended up getting back in total about 6.1%. Um, but yes, it, was, it, wasn't, uh, it wasn't anticipated that we would see this volume on the market so quickly. So it was a bit of a scrabble to get the, the process in place to do the buyback. But hang on. I've served on a couple of listed companies' boards. Before I was able to sell shares as a director, I first had to ask permission yes. of, the chief exec yes. of, the, of the chairman of the company. Yes. We did, this, did this the not happen? We did receive the permission, but it was within minutes of the shares going onto the market. So when, we, when I first heard about the, the shares going on the market, I hadn't, didn't, didn't even know the permission had gone through to our office. So um, our secretary had received the permission, but they put the shares on within minutes of, uh, so of the point getting was the permission through. You didn't know that they were selling, no. but the company knew. Who at the company knew? Our company secretary. So does your company secretary give permission then? With no, no. Well, he would deal with all the paperwork. So uh, he would. But surely have he can't give permission. It no, has to no, go no, through no. The it still has to go through the chairman, etc. But and did the chairman know? Yes. Well, all of the all the, the due process was followed in terms of getting the permission. But we didn't. Uh, you know, it wasn't. It was. It was a timing issue. That we didn't have anything in place to do a buyback. So. Um, but Eric, I've got a problem. When a company buys back shares in the market, why would it do so from its own directors? who would have known that it wanted to buy back shares in the market. The whole thing, does, it doesn't sit well in corporate well, governance terms. The big issue that we've had is that the volumes traded on the market are so minuscule that while we've had the intention to do a buyback, we just didn't see that it would, it would come into effect in any time soon because we were hoping that somewhere down the line, um, maybe uh, one of the larger institutional shareholders would say, listen, we're interested in selling. And then we'd put the process in place and we'd do the buyback. So when we suddenly got this, saw this block of 23 million shares on the market, we said, well, here's the opportunity. There are 23 million shares in the market. We've been trying to do a buyback for a long time, but no one's been interested in selling. So we better take advantage of this and do the deal. Now, the shares sat on the market for nearly two hours before we got the process in place to do the buyback. So you know, anyone who wants to go in there and purchase the shares could have done so. Um, but, but why not just talk to the directors once they asked you if they could sell, if they could get permission to sell, and say, sure, guys, hang on. We'll make sure that this happens. Do due process to the market. Let everybody in the market know that you've got two directors selling. Uh, then you go and screw it up by, by saying, well, these guys bought rather than sold. I mean, the whole thing is a mess. Yeah, and look, uh, the, the issue is that when the opportunities arise, one's really got to, got to grab them. It's not, we don't see the volumes coming through on Comair that would, that would provide these opportunities regularly. So when the opportunities do arise, we've got, to, we've got to chase after them. But obviously, it has to be done in accordance with the, the JSE regulations, etc. So we're comfortable that the process followed was 100% in line with JSE regulations. So we even got legal advice on it very quickly to make sure that we weren't breaking any rules. Our sponsors were happy with it. Uh, yes, there was an error that was done in terms of the announcement that was, that was completed on a, on a, on a, uh, a purchase <coughs> template instead of a sale template. 
Um, but the process is 100% within JSC regulations. It was an open trade on the market. Um, you could see from the timing that it wasn't, we didn't have our ducks in a row to take advantage of the buyback immediately. So yes, it did take a little while for us to get, to get the process in place to do the buyback. Um, but yes, we don't see these opportunities coming around very often in terms of that kind of volume on the market for Comair. So we could have turned around and said, well, you know, let's put it aside and try and do it sometime in the future and hope to find those volumes again. But for the last uh, three, four years now, we haven't seen big movements in shareholding in the, in the company. We've got a very static, uh, very stable shareholder base. Um, so it's not as if we could simply re-implement a buyback in a few months' time and hope to get another a reasonable volume again. Just on the directorships of both Mr. Ron and Julia as well as Atul Gupta, will they still be uh, directors at the company? Well, that's a separate matter altogether. You know, it's not, it's not uh, directly linked to the shareholding, so we'll have to see what, what happens going forward on the directorships. And corrective action against maybe the JSC or RMB, will any of that be taken given the fact that they published incorrect information? Now, if we apologize to the JSC, the fault, uh, we've spoken to RMB, the fault in terms of the uh, SENS announcement, uh, strictly speaking, was our fault, not RMB's fault. We've followed up with that. I think uh, that some of the journalists got a bit carried away in terms of sensationalizing the whole process. But um, it wasn't RMB's fault, and uh, we apologize to JSC. They've accepted it. Uh, I think it was just a matter of trying to get too much done in too short a time. Uh, like I said, we, we weren't anticipating that we would see this many shares coming up for sale so quickly. You're being very hard on my colleague, whoever he might be, the journalist who did that, because lots of people follow director dealings, and if you see uh, big purchases of shares, there are probably a few guys feeling very sore this morning uh, that they bought shares on the strength of coattailing on an Atul Gupta and a, and a Ron and Tuli. But the question really that, that remains is that a year ago, your share price was about a third of where it is today. Yes. Why didn't you go in and try and buy shares at that stage? Why wait until it's gone from the early run rands to... I think the, the problem is always that um, you've really got to get the rest of the board on board. And at the time, there was a, a general perception that we were in an incredibly difficult position. The oil price was rising rapidly. The airfares were not rising. Uh, we did have a lot of plans in place to turn things around. But I think there was less... Um, assurance within the board that these plans are all going to work. They have worked out. We have managed to turn things around. Uh, we've got a very conservative board. At the time, they, they wanted to see the proof that things would turn around. And uh, yes, you know, maybe if they'd, if they'd uh, had greater faith that all the plans would have worked, they would have gone ahead and done the buyback at the time. But again, even at that point in time, the share of volumes traded was so minuscule, we could have put a buyback in the market, we would have picked but, up. But you've got Brian Joffe as a big shareholder. He's wanting to accumulate stock. Don't you feel that you should have at least given him the option maybe of buying it rather than the company buying itself, using precious resources? Look, he does have, uh, it, it, it was on the market for, like I said, almost two hours. So he's got brokers involved, etc. If he wanted to purchase that stock, he could have done so. Um, no doubt some lessons learned from this, say, Eric? Look, it's, it's, never, it's never a dull moment. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> That's for sure. <laughs> we live in a mining town, don't we? And strange uh, things happen. Mm. Strange things happen. Um, but like I said, we, 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 we're happy to say it in terms of the process followed, it all has all been signed off both by the lawyers and by the JSE, uh, apart from a little glitch in, the, in, in one word in the SENS announcement, which obviously mm. well, had to a be very, dealt with. Very important word. But the, yes. the, the point here is that Eric is very positive. The board is very positive. They've paid top dollar to buy back shares in their company. Mr. Gupta's got more money in his back pocket, and I guess okay. other shareholders in Comair should be happy.